just look who can't go out and shoot today, so they've resorted to watching YouTube videos about shooting film. Well boy do I have you covered for that. Well in my last video I left off talking about Lomochrome Turquoise and hopping on a flight and going to Houston, Galveston. It's all part of Texas. Texas is so large you could never describe all of its cities. So continuing from where we left off, we find our protagonist loading up a roll of Kodak Gold 200 in his Fujika GL690 in the wonderful city of Galveston, Texas. Walking around that day, I thought it would be fun if I tried to capture the moments of the people that we went with on the trip. Any of you are familiar with the concept of taking a album cover photo. It's where you have your band members spread throughout the frame, each of them doing their own thing but not really paying attention to the camera. And if there is anyone paying attention to the camera, usually it's the lead singer and he's staring directly into the lens, almost piercing your soul. Here at Lifeguard Station 29, we decided to do just that. so attracted to this pier roller coaster amusement park. It wasn't that interesting, but I feel like I just had to finish the roll. The detail here is pretty astonishing, but um, pretty lackluster shot. My eighth photo is actually in the terminal of the cruise line security check. Also as a shout out for the guys working the x-ray scanner in the cruise ship line, thank you because they not only recognized that film should not go through an x-ray scanner, but they also uh, congratulated me for knowing that. <laughs> Upon asking for a hand check, the two gentlemen said, oh yeah, yeah, that film, you don't want that to go through there and I had never felt so connected to a bloomer in my whole life. Anyways, big shout out to you guys. And honestly, that's how most airports should be. You know, film is not contraband. It is just sensitive to X-ray radiation. Now, moving on to the next role, I actually took very detailed notes of this role, and hopefully I'll be able to glean something important from it. For those of you unfamiliar with Lomo Babylon 13, it's a 13 speed film that needs all the light it can get. And that's why I brought the Canonet QL17 G3 because it has this awesome F1.8 lens. And uh, surprisingly, I was able to shoot wide open midday at 1 500th of a second, which is the max shutter speed of that lens. And uh, let's look at some of the results from that film stock. Thank you. 
So the first photo I have that was able to be scanned is a photo of my wife with some ice cream. Now there's a noticeable haze on this film. I don't know if that's from Lomo re-spooling this film or whether that's due to my camera. I'm pretty sure it's not my camera. There's this really smooth and soft characteristic to this film which is hard to get nowadays. A lot of black and white films are trying to be sharp or dynamic, uh, but this one really has a sense of softness to it, and I really, really like that. And the rest of these photos are just from our first day on the ship, and just kind of taking in the environment in a very pleasing black and white way. Later that night, I wanted to stay up late and take some photos of the interior of the boat, which meant pulling out my tripod and doing some long exposures. Some of them were up to 30 seconds. None of those photos turned out. I don't know what it was, whether my light meter app just doesn't register that far, but shooting wide open at f1.7 and keeping the shutter open for 30 seconds should have rendered something, but I guess this film suffers greatly from reciprocity failure. I signed up for a basketball three-on-three -three competition on this ship, and we got our butts handed to us like we should have, a bunch of nerds trying to play basketball. During that time, my wife was taking photos, and at the time, I thought the way you shot it is probably going to be overexposed because she decided to shoot the us playing basketball at f1.6 and a 60th of a second. And at the time, I thought, man, that's gonna be way overexposed. But looking at the image, it's actually one of the better exposed images on the roll. Probably because it retains the shadows, but the highlights are still there. So maybe I should have been shooting this film two stops overexposed at three ISO. These photos were taken in the chapel of the cruise ship, which the chapel on this ship is the last remaining chapel on a cruise line in the entire world. So we've got the Minolta Dual 35 Weathermatic. Haven't tested it. Hopefully it's not a complete sack of trash and it actually exposes correctly. I think all you have to do is just that much. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Didn't even have to turn it on. All right, let's go take some chlorine -y pictures. Arriving in Costa Maya, I decided to take with me pretty much my entire camera setup. We brought the Minolta Weathermatic Dual 35, the Canonet QL17 G3 with the Lomo Babylon 13, and I brought Fuji Pro 400H and some Portra 160, although I didn't get around to the Portra 160. Arriving at the Chachobin ruins, we were told by our tour guide that photos were okay and that if you were to take a video on your phone or with a professional camera, take photos of the pyramids or the uh, temples that are left there, you'll be charged a $5 fine. And that's not a fine of illegal, that's a fine of copyright because the ancient Mayans that built these temples decided from their graves 
they decided to file a copyright patent with the Mexican government. So all of the money that is earned from charging people to take videos of these uh, landmarks is going straight to the pockets of the deceased Mayans. Now you can feel good when you go and visit these ruins. While we were at the ruins, I really wanted to focus on using the black and white roll for taking photos of the architecture and contrasty images while I used the Pro 400 for scenes that had a lot of greenery in them. Baby, you give me ice and fire. You're giving me wind and rain. You're some kind of butterfly. On the way back to our bus, I was walking along the pathway and I noticed that there was some rays of light coming through the trees and would kind of create the perfect silhouette photo and sure enough it did. It did rewind. Oh good. We just got some extra shots. And it's not wet inside, so that's good. Yeah. You dropped it in a hot tub. I did drop it in a hot tub. <laughs> it smells like 90s plastic. When we got back on the ship, I kind of put away the Minolta for now because I didn't have any DX coated film that would fit in that camera and that I wanted to shoot underwater. I also put away the Canonet because there wasn't really that much to shoot with it and I didn't want to load up a roll of Porsche 800 in that camera because it would be very difficult to shoot that camera during the day and there's not a lot of time at night. You're indoors most of the time so even Porsche 800 doesn't really work well indoors. I didn't have any photos of the time on the ship until we got to Cozumel. When we got to Cozumel, I was very excited to shoot the Kodak Sport underwater camera, whatever the heck you want to call it. And I thought I was going to shoot this while walking around. It was very compact and it'd be easy, focus free, just point and shoot. But with better judgment, I put the camera away and pulled out my Fujika GL690. While cruising along to our first stop on the tour, I loaded up some Portra 160, which would serve many purposes. I kind of like this film on beaches because it just offers a very warm, but kind of neutral color profile.
the first photo I took on this roll was this photo of what is essentially a smokestack. This was put on the island in three locations, letting the villagers know from which direction pirates or other people were coming from by lighting a brazier and sending smoke up into the air. Now this is the part of the trip that I had been preparing for most by buying an underwater point and shoot and an underwater disposable camera. However, upon getting to this crystal clear water part of land, the Kodak Sport underwater camera did not wind, it didn't advance to the next frame. <laughs> It was so disappointing because we saw so much interesting wildlife underneath those coral reefs. We saw a piranha, we saw a brain coral, we saw a stingray, and luckily none of us were impaled by the stingray. So unfortunately for the scuba diving portion of our trip, all I have are these photos. Quickly after finishing the roll of Portra 160, I loaded up a roll of Pro 400H. Mm -hmm. oh, those are my toes. Uh, Hi! Oh, look at this. It's the real Nat Geo moment. I know I smell good, but I got nothing for you. Look, see, there's nothing in my hand. Be careful, huh? Be careful. Hey, get down. After we were done with all of our activities on the island, we hopped back into our Jeeps and drove back to the port. And after shopping around for a little bit, we got back on the cruise ship. And the whole way back to the cruise ship, I was trying to tear apart the Kodak Sport. And I just wanted to get that camera taken apart because I, I wanted to shoot the film that was inside of it. But after tearing out the camera, it's not the same as a regular point and shoot that's disposable. There's no shutter button. So in order to defeat this lack of foresight by Kodak, I tore off this uh, clip that was on the bottom of the camera and wedged it into where the shutter would have been had it been in the enclosure that it came in. And I was able to fire off some shots with relative ease only a little bit of a pressure point on my finger while trying to shoot, but it was kind of fun nonetheless to do this. And here's some of the photos that I got.
after that day of shooting that disposable camera, I was pretty much done with taking photos on the cruise. And I didn't load up another roll until we made it back to Humble, Texas, which is right outside of the Houston International Airport. And I loaded up a roll of Kodak Gold 200 and walked through this treed area in the middle of an uh, interstate roadway and took some photos in there, which I thought would be more interesting than they were, but let's see if I can provide a little breakdown on some of these photos and why I took them. As a reminder for those of you who may not have subscribed yet, I'm doing a giveaway once I reach 500 subscribers, and you, if you win, will have your choice of either Fuji Pro 400H or a roll of Kodak Ultramax 400 sent to your door. I just want to say thank you for all the support that's been given on the videos thus far. I super appreciate it, and uh, I hope to pr I hope to improve. <laughs> I think I'm going to leave that in there. But overall, I'm very appreciative of the time you guys spend watching these videos. And I know this one was probably a longer one than you would have liked. Me too. But the next one, we will hopefully be focusing solely on this camera right here. Like if you enjoyed the video. Bye.